morning from my village, man. It's been two weeks without being in front of the camera. Your boy has been sick. It seems that I've been working so hard that this work actually got me. So I took some time off. to can not spend time with my mom, eat good food, rest well, and then come back again with good energy. I was supposed to go to Nigeria, but whatever that is happening in Nigeria, I feel like I need to hold on. From the last video that I think I did about Nigeria, I still got a lot of people threatening me in my emails. I mean, Nigerians threaten me. But this will not stop me from speaking from the heart. Whether you like it or not, Africa belongs to us. And if we all can forget these artificial borders and come together as one, Africa's problem will be solved. Like whatever is going on in Nigeria, I've seen some Nigerians crying for the West to come and support them. If all African leaders should come together to solve what is going on in Nigeria, it's sad that the West being an enemy of Africa, they always want to see us divided. And it seems that Africans have not even seen it. But I'm not here to talk about this problem. Uh, enough is enough. And SARS now, and police brutality. But hey, I mean, I just want to tell you guys that we're living in a small world, man. A very small world, you know. I met this lady at um, Kou. I don't know if you guys saw this video that I did. The biggest hotel in Africa. I met Drew, the girl that most of you were saying that she sounds like Nicki Minaj. And um, I just found out that this girl is from the same village as me. I couldn't believe it. So I told her, if you are from this place, then you need to come here. Let me know that you are really from this place. So she's here. I don't know where she is. Hey, Drew. She's here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you guys. Um, Hi, Hi, Drew. <laughs> like, I, I, I can't believe that we are from the same place. We are. Like, the world, the way God works is just amazing. So technically, you might be like my long lost cousin or something. Like, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> like, yo, I, I, I met you in the cave. Mm -hmm. Literally. And then look at where we are now. And even after the cave whole experience, I made you carry yeah, some you wood on your... You some woods and then you told me that one day I need to come to the village. I'm telling you. And look at me now. Look at Do, me. How, how did you find out that you're from here? Well, I mean, I had a conversation with my mum and my grandma and I told them, Oh my gosh, I met this amazing guy with the mic. He's from a hint copy chrome. And they were like, what? So are we. I'm actually... The chief of this, you know, village is my uncle. So guys, I'm a princess. She's a princess uh -huh. in my village. Yeah, no. no hey. Yeah. <laughs> so we came to say hello. Yeah. Would the Maya speak in Fanti because I don't understand. <laughs> I still can't. I'm learning. Kak crack kak crack. Kitu Oh. <laughs> no, no. Um, Mr. Chobium. Um, me, me said, well, cool. Yeah, you saw the video. So I met her at Kou, and then I found out that we are all from the same place. And I didn't even know. So the mom told me to speak to you. That was the first time that I spoke to you in person. And um, she came to visit, and I was like, you know, I need to bring her in here for her to come and see you for the first time. You've never met him before? Eh? No. So I'm meeting my uncle for the first Stop. time. <laughs> Aquaba. Aquaba. So, uh, mommy, mm -hmm. what do you want to do today? Well, today I have done a lot of things. A lot of things? I've swept the compound. Which compound? Out here. Where you slept? Mm hmm. Okay. Then I went to take the rubbish to the refuse dump on my head. Yes. Over there, over. Oh, I always keep pointing oh, this way, over, this, over here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then I went, the ladies are having a funeral downstairs. So I helped them fetch water to wash the things and I carried it on my head. And then they were making fufu. So we helped them cut the cocoa yam. Not the cocoa yam, cassava. The cassava. <laughs> And so I've done a lot. I wanted to see um, what it was like to in my hometown, a hint coffee cream. So I've, Woodemai has helped me show me around. Um, now I know where I'm from. 
Don't mention what am I? Mention Kobena. Kobena eh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Kobena, Kobena. Uh -huh. <laughs> he showed me how um, they live here, and so um, I like it. Like this is my uncle. That's my mum. But look at this. Look at this. This one. This your mum. That's my mum. But I want you to see this one. That's me. Oh <laughs> Oh. That's me when I was a baby, well, in primary school, and these are my two sisters. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, that's my mum, and these are my little sisters. So, yes, in case you thought it was a lie, <laughs> I'm from here. You guys see my baby picture first, I'm online, wow. Is the mic on? I hope I get that sound. Ah, it's on. Yeah. This is incredible. Wow, Small and we're world. actually neighbours. Neighbours? Neighbours, that's my, my grandmother's house. My mum was born here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Ah. So, my, wow. mom, my mom was born here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so this is your grandmother, and that's my grandmother. Wow, look exactly. at God. I'm telling you, man. So besties, a, we're besties for uh, life now. <laughs> <laughs> so they know you of course you don't say howdy oh so when I want to know about the main thing, I'm in the Ah, next up. You don't know how Ah, I'm Okay. Yes. So if you pass this, then I will say, now I can accept the fact that you are the princess of my town. What? I can't believe this. Now I can't accept that I'm you are I'm not going to lie, there's No, so I'm going to give you, this is 50 pesos. Okay. You're going to go there. To pee? To pee. No, 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 come. Just come. It's okay, just come. You're not going to pee, you're going to shit. Ah! So you're gonna come and then how much is it? Um, so it's like 30 pesos. Uh -huh. Money, paper. Paper? Drew. Not even so, tissue. Not tissue, this is graphic, okay? So whenever you're done, wipe your ass with it and come back, all right? So I'm gonna wait for you. This is male and female. Don't, make sure you don't enter this one. Okay. Guys, it. But it already stinks. Oh my god. Oh my god. No. No, guys. <laughs> There's poo on the. There's a hole in the ground, and some people have missed the hole. Oh, mm -mm. sorry. I'd rather hold it than go inside. I can't do that. <laughs> do they want the paper back? Because I can't do that. No way. Drew, I can't smile with you. Wh why are you still having the paper in your hands? I told you I couldn't. It was definitely an experience that I've never experienced before. Whether I would do that again, I can't tell you right you now. Failed. So I can't call you the princess. Excuse me? No, you failed. Once a princess, always a princess. No. Thank you. Drew, this is where I grew up. Mm -hmm. This is my mom's kitchen. So oh, like, wow. talking about my whole life in this village, this is where it started from. Interesting. With a mile, with a mile. Yeah. So I want to know, what was your, when you saw the, your first time seeing a proper toilet in China, what was that like? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I, I was shocked that people live this way because where I grew up from, I never had a chance to use that. Mm. So it was always like, even I think the one that you saw was better because we used to go to 
um, a nearby one where it's just trees on top of a hole then you stand on the tree and then you do your own thing you know but I'm, I, I'm just trying as much as possible to change things as time goes on in here let's see yeah. it's just that here everything is politics so if you start to do anything for them they think that oh you're doing it because of your uh, political ambition or something yeah. but uh, you know the people deserve better that's yeah. what I always say you know good roads good healthcare ICT center it's part of my whole dream to do it for the village but um, you have to give me the chance to do it for them you know yeah so I mean I want to know your story I mean why you left um, the UK and come back to Ghana mm-hmm I mean why did I leave the UK I'm um, okay so I left 2018 mm -hmm. um, my life was interesting in London. As you know, outside of Ghana is hustling. I was working about four jobs at a time. Wow. Yeah, and um, at the same time, you know, my passion is to motivate, inspire, and empower young ladies mm. to be a presenter. And so I was having to do that as plan B. Plan B, but so, you couldn't do that in the UK? I was doing it in the UK, but it was always a plan B because you needed to fend for yourself in terms of working, hustling, mm. getting so much money. So you would work so hard, at the end of the month, you would probably have, after you pay all of your bills, you'd have enough money to either save, buy a new dress, or go out to eat. You have to pick one out of the three. So 2018, my dad passed away, and he was my best friend. And um, then I realized that, you know what? Life is actually short. So let me stop living, making someone else's dream come true, and put myself as plan A and come to Ghana. So I just wanted the break, to be fair. Like, the plan wasn't to come forever. Mm. I just wanted the break. So I came to Ghana. My ticket was just for about four months. My mum was like, what are you doing? I'm not going to let you go unless I see papers that you're going to, you know, work somewhere. Mm. I was like, don't worry. I'll be OK. Even my grandma in Ghana, she was like, well, I'm so confused. Why are you here? It's like, don't worry. So, you know, after a few months, Month after a month of being in Ghana, I was like, you know, I'm a bit of a workaholic because mm. I can't just sit doing nothing. So went around looking for a job. I googled, you know, top three t TV stations in Ghana. Ghana. One of them had to cancel out because they only speak tree, and I don't speak any tree or fancy <laughs> or anywhere or anything. Yeah. I just speak English. English that's it. So um, yeah, I mean, God was good. He opened some doors, and I had the opportunity to start working at GH1 TV oh, okay. mm -hmm. as a presenter. So I started as an intern for a whole year and a half. I wasn't getting paid. I know, right? So imagine coming from London where I had four jobs. I was able to, I like nice things, you mm. know? So you got to work hard for them. Exactly. So I was able to work for my holidays, my good bougie food and all that stuff. And then came to Ghana and then for a year and a half, I was using my savings to survive out here. But it's fine, you know, still had to keep going, keep praying all that stuff. And then Another door opened and finally, you know, have the opportunity to be getting paid on a different TV station. And I mean, I'm all about young girls. And so exactly. my passion is to be like, I want to be everybody's big sister. You know, even my camera guy, Richie, I'm like his big sister. I want to feel like I'm his big <laughs> sister. I've got so many other girls that I've, you know, taken under my wing and just to be able to be there. the big sister that I never had because I'm the oldest. I'm the first grandchild, the first daughter, the first everything. Wow. So lots of pressure on me. Lots of pressure. But um, you've been in Ghana for how long now? Since 2018 till now? Yeah. You never left? I would go to London for maybe like a quick holiday for a month. Okay, so I went for a month to go back to work to make some more money so that I can come back to Ghana and spend it. But I haven't lived there for a long time now. So literally the next time I go to London is to pack everything and yeah. to like, I mean, I've nearly got everything here, just a few hair products. You little but but uh, like are you working right now since you, you know your previous job was not paying are you working right now yes okay so now i've got a job on mx24 a tv radio and um, tv station mm. um i also do a lot of different things i mean now i have the opportunity to say they're that, paying you yeah yeah they are wow after two and a bit years in ghana now i'm the owner of a plantain chips line my own plantain chips. And yes, you're clapping because you're saying well done, right? Well done. The chips are called yeah. Aiko. Ah! Wow. Aiko, which means well done. Done. So oh, it was okay. a, a bit of a gift to myself. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. 
Drew, you know what? I know so many people like you that were born and raised in the UK. We're born and raised in the West that um, coming back home is never an option for them because they don't know anybody here. They were not born here. They were raised in the UK. But most of them are telling me that, what am I? My parents are recommending your channel to me. And now I feel like going back home. Oh, but where do I start? Wow. So if they, I know they are watching. Where, where do they have to start? For me, I would say, you have to start with yourself. Think about what your passion is, because it's not going to be easy. A lot of people want to come to Ghana, a lot of people same. Tell me, oh, Drew, you're doing so well, I'm going to come. But it is not easy and it hasn't been it's an easy journey. I'll tell you that for free. So first you think about what it is exactly that you want to come and do. Mm. If you want to be a fashion designer, if you want to own a skin care line, if you want to be a presenter, think about what you want to do and remember your why why you want to do it because when times get rough you have to remember why you came in the first place and that will be able to motivate you to keep going so for me i started off as an intern imagine i've been getting paid big figures in a higher currency so to say in pounds my whole life i started working when i was 15 okay and then to to come humble myself back down at my age when I'm supposed to be getting ready to be getting married and building my house and I've come back to be an intern, people think that's crazy. But I did it. And so just know it's not going to be easy. Do a lot of research in what it is that you want to do. Don't be like Drew. Drew just picked up her bag what and said, I'm going. <laughs> so do more research into what it is that you want to do. And then when you come, try at stages. Don't just pack everything because then some people come for like maybe two years and like, just forget it, I can't do it, it didn't work, don't like the way Ghanaians think. But you have to let go of that mentality and realise that in Ghana things are done differently. It will be a little bit frustrating, but when you continue, it will work out in the end. You know what I found out? What? Apart from you being a TV presenter, you're also a content creator. Uh -huh. And things that you're doing on your channel is crazy. Oh. I see you selling fan eyes. Yeah. I see you selling plantain chips. <laughs> I see you like almost everywhere. I went to sell fish. I've got videos coming off of me doing wache. I even climbed the coconut tree with Maya. Because I'm so interested in seeing what life is like on the other side. Sorry. Okay. So yes, Drew coming from People think Jews, oh, come to the UK, why do you come? Why did you leave the UK to come to Ghana? Mm. I want to know, there's people in Ghana who've survived. Look at you. Exactly. You survived, you're a living testimony. Yeah. And so I want to know, what does it feel like to mm. work these jobs? And there are people, did you know, mm. a wache seller, mm. she wakes up in the morning at, you know, 4 a.m. She finishes work, let's say 11, when everyone's bought their wache, and she makes 4,000 CDs every day. Hey. Do you know how much money that is? Yeah, of course I know. And then there's people who are in Ghana that are like, no, I would never do that job. Oh, no, no, no. And they would rather sit in an office, but they're not even getting that a month. A month. <laughs> even in a month. Yeah, exactly. You probably wouldn't get that in a month. And so... Uh, it's miseducation. I mean, and then people have to learn something new. But I'm so glad that you're having all these experiences. And uh, someday... And um, congratulations about your, how do you call it? The plantain chips. It seems like you love eating plantain chips. I That's love pla excited. plantain. is my favorite food in the whole world. Honestly, I can eat, sleep, drink plantain. Have you tried plantain ice cream? You're missing out. Are you kidding me? <laughs> plantain ice cream. Plantain ice cream. <laughs> so, you know what? All I want to say is that thank you so much for coming to visit my village and you being the princess of So I'm not going to accept the fact that you're princess to. in my town. Forget. But um, yeah, you all should go check out the description box. She has a YouTube channel, yeah. Travel with Drew. Make sure you click on it, subscribe, and be part of her family. I think most of you are already part of the family based yes. on the, um, the video that we did at Kobe. So, yeah. If More you haven't subscribed, you. So subscribe, subscribe now. More thank content you. coming your way. Mwah!